My life personally is kind of like a dream, like a movie, like you never know what's going to happen. People usually get in the public eye, they have their breakdown, <laughs> everyone makes fun of them, blah, blah, blah. So I've kind of gotten that out of the way. So it's perfect now that this is happening. Uh, wait a minute, I'm just an everyday man on the hustle, just trying to survive. This tour uh, is the first time I've left America, the first time I've toured, so it's very special to me in that, that way. I've always kind of wanted to travel, so the fact that I get to do music and travel at the same time is like uh, a bonus for me. I've never left the country. I've always wanted to go to London, so to come here first before I go to these other places, it worked out really good for me. What time does it close? Two? Do you guys have to close it too, or like, because in America you have to close it too? Oh, okay. Say hello to Kevin Davis Jr. for the first time. The debut night in Dance Tunnel, it couldn't have been more perfect. There's a group of people there singing the songs right in front of my face, which has never happened. I kind of came from like a mainstream slash gospel world and then I drifted into the independent underground world. I was basically being groomed for like a gospel or mainstream R&B type of world, like a mainstream label type of thing. Before I was making stuff that you might hear on the radio because I was taught exactly how to do that. But the minute I heard underground music, it was like, whoa, like, so I tried to like fuse the two. So I took the stuff that I had been making to the mainstream people. And that's when I started getting like rejection, like, oh gosh, you're crazy. Y'all are sick. Being rejected by mainstream labels, it was it was face to face, a lot of face to face stuff, like uh, you suck or um, you're you're crazy. A couple people like actually thought I was crazy. Once word kind of got out that I was doing something different, I kind of got black blacklisted from that circle. I guess I was really, really disappointed, but I did act out against it, you know? So I just kind of felt like, you know, the Matrix, where they like, which pill? It was very Matrixy that part of my life. So 1999 was actually, yeah, when I had started experimenting with drugs also. It was around that time my adventure down the rabbit hole started. In my personal life, I went through a very, very dark time where just dark things started happening, like back to back to back. It's a combination of everything from drugs, depression, violence. You think of all your nightmares that you could ever think of. Think of those things like coming true back to back for like certain years. There was a point where I had stopped working on music, and that's where it was the darkest, because usually I'm working on music or something, I'm always creating something, and I stopped, and I just kind of started getting in trouble. The gig that I played at the record store in Berlin was um, not on the tour schedule, it was actually added. Um, and it was for Oye Records. Really nice guys. Um, I met them at Chalet and they were just really kind. And a lot of people showed up, uh, more than I had like realized, a lot of press. I personally, I thought it was a, uh, one of the worst shows just because I was sick. But it turns out everyone had a good time, so that was that was good.
my disillusionment with the music industry is just, I, I got tired of being told what to do. It's pretty simple. I got tired of people telling me that I'm supposed to do this or that, which had been going on for years, like since I was a teenager. It's not like I quit making music, I can't. I really can't. I was still doing stuff every now and then. But as far as like showing it to other people or working with other people, I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. So I kind of took a break. When I took a break, I literally stopped answering my phone. He stopped answering emails. And I didn't, usually people would hit me up for beats. I just was like, no, I'm not talking to any, anybody. And then I would make stuff for myself and just kind of save it, not show anybody. Well, the Lost Tapes, there's tons of tracks from that period. I would literally uh, lock myself in the studio and record for weeks, months. So I put all the tapes and all the music stuff in storage. So after the dark years and after I came out of everything and I was back in the light, I went and I got the stuff out of the storage and I transferred it onto a CD and it got to Koopma. And then Koopma heard thanks, he liked it, and then he sent me an email saying that he wanted to uh, put it out. Koopma's like the, the start of it all, the reason why I would be here. It's about time I met Koopma. I've actually met everyone else except Koopma, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of gone backwards. <laughs> was good, man. <laughs> I got back to him barely, like, I think the deadline was a few days away. So for thanks and the Worldwide Family Volume 2, like, I had just met the deadline. I gave him uh, Lost Tapes. Uh, I gave him all the material that I had from them, and he picked and, ch and chose the ones that became the Lost Tapes Volume 1. This is crazy. My man Seven Davis Jr. is in the building. We actually just met for the first time. Yeah, this is cool. Koopma is so humble, but um, I have no problem saying and admitting that Koopma definitely started my career. If he hadn't sent me that email, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. He says I would have still had success, which, yeah, I'd like to believe so also. But this way is perfect for me, you know. I, I can think of a better way. No, I don't want to talk about it for too long. Let's just go out tonight and kick it. Let's just go out tonight and go dancing, dancing on the side. Let's go dancing. Playing with Koopmo tonight at the very last night of the tour is full circle for me because he started this whole thing with my career and like the music being available to people now. And uh, it just feels really good to end the tour on that note. Definitely now I'm the happiest that I've ever been, you know. Yeah, I am happy. I'm thinking maybe you're the one. If I would have gotten signed when I was a teenager and if all these things would have happened then, it may not have gone so well. You got, I, was, I was pretty wild at the time. People worry, like, oh, you're back on tour and you're going to be around a lot of party stuff. And it's been said a lot of times. When people ask me, like, oh, you think you might go back into... No, because I, like, I've, I've had enough. That I took care of that period. I found this brand new energy for music, which I still have now to where it's like, you know, just do it for fun, you know? Before I had been told to do it for this or that, and this is what it's about, but I found out that it's just, I love doing this and I'm just gonna do it and I'm gonna have fun with it. Could it be a boat 